Hi there, my name is Gunal and today I'll be talking through the basic exponent rules that you're going to need to know for the SAT math section. Then after that, I'm going to work through a few exponent problems that are commonly seen on the test. There are eight rules that you need to know for the SAT math section. You're probably familiar with some, if not all of these rules, but I'm going to quickly recap what they are so everybody's familiar. The first one is the zero rule. This one's pretty easy and it just says that anything raised to the power of zero is going to be one. So for example, we have here two raised to the power of zero, that will be equivalent to one. Next up, we have the product rule. This one states that assuming the bases are the same, if two numbers with exponents are multiplied, you're going to add their exponents together. So this example here, we have two squared times two to the third. So you're gonna add the exponents together, which will give us two to the fifth power or 32. The next rule we have is the quotient rule. This one's essentially just the opposite of the product rule. So if you have two numbers with the same bases being divided, you're going to subtract their exponents. So in this case, we have two to the third power over two squared and three minus two is one. So we have two to the first power or just two. Now we have the power of products and the power of quotient rules. These rules just establish that if you have two numbers being multiplied or divided and you raise those numbers to a power, the exponent will be applied to both of those numbers. We're almost done with the rules, I promise. We now have the power of a power rule, which is when you're raising a number to a power twice. In this case, you would multiply the exponents. So if we have two squared and we square that again, it's gonna be the same as two to the fourth or 16. Now we have the rule with negative powers. And according to this rule, whenever we have a negative power, we're gonna take the reciprocal or one over the original number, and then we're gonna raise it to the positive power. So for example, if we have two raised to the negative two, we're gonna take the reciprocal of two first, which is one half. And then from there, we're gonna square the two, which is gonna leave you with one fourth. The final rule we have is the one involving fractional exponents. In these cases, you're gonna raise the base to the power of the numerator and then take the root of the denominator. If x is raised to the power of a over b, we would get the b root of x to the a. So a quick example of this is if we have four raised to the power of one half, that would give us the square root of four to the first power, which would leave us with two. Let's move into some example problems here. So this first problem is essentially asking us to simplify the expression that we're given. Your first instinct might be to apply the fraction exponent rule that we just talked about, but we should hold off on that for now. On the SAT, before you do anything, you should try and see if you can make the base smaller. So right now, our expression has a base of nine, which is kind of hard to work with, but you know that nine is the same thing as three squared. So we could substitute that in. So that'll leave us with three squared raised to the power of three over four. Now we can apply the power of a power rule we talked about earlier and make it three to the power of six over four. Now we're gonna stop for a second because you should always simplify your fractions. Because on the SAT, answer choices nine times out of 10 will be given in simplified fractions. So it just makes things easier. So let's quickly pause and change the six fourths to three over two. So now we have three raised to the power of three over two. Now we can apply the fractional exponent rule to get square root of three cubed or the square root of 27. Now it's just a matter of simplifying the radical. You probably learned how to do this in your algebra class, but essentially the goal is to find numbers that are multiples of the square root of 27. In this case, we know that the square root of nine times the square root of three is the square root of 27. And we also know that the square root of nine is three. So that can leave us with three times the square root of three, which is answer choice D. Next up, we have a question that's asking which is equivalent to the following expression. Now in the SAT math section, when it's asking you which is equivalent, that's pretty much just a telltale sign that you're going to have to simplify. So in this case, we're gonna use the exponent rules to simplify the expression. Now the general rule of thumb here, as we did in the last problem, is to see how much you can simplify inside of the parentheses and radicals before you start messing with the exponents that are outside that. So inside of the parentheses, we're gonna use the quotient rule. 
Remember that this rule will only apply to those exponents that have the same base. So we're gonna apply the rule separately to the x bases and the ones with the y bases. So based on this rule, we're gonna have to subtract the exponents on numbers with the same base, meaning we get x to the two minus one times y to the one minus three. So the reason we have the ones here is because when you have just an x or just a y, you by default assume that it's going to be raised to the first power unless otherwise indicated. So now we're left with x times y to the negative two. Now using the negative exponent rule, we can just make this x over y squared. So now that we've simplified the inside, we can start messing with the outside exponents. So we're gonna raise this expression to the power of four, which is gonna leave us to, with x to the fourth over y to the eighth, which is answer choice A. The last question I wanted to go through in this video is one that makes you apply the exponent rules in a pretty creative way, which makes it an example of a difficult SAT math problem. So in the problem, we have an expression here that says x raised to the a squared over x raised to the b squared is equal to x to the 24th power. We're also given that a plus b is equal to six. And the question is asking us to find the value of a minus b. So pause the video real quick and see if you can figure out what the question is trying to make you do. I said before, this is an example of a difficult SAT math problem, so don't worry if you can't get it. We're gonna work through it together in a second. So what we're gonna do here first is see if we can mess around with that original expression and change it into something else. So using the quotient rule, we can achieve x to the a squared minus b squared, and we have that set equal to x to the 24. From here, since we have the same base of x all across the equation, we can cancel out the x's and be left with a squared minus b squared equal to 24. Now, as some of you guys might recognize, this is a difference of squares. This is an algebra concept that essentially states that a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. Now the difference of squares is commonly seen in the SAT math section and when you recognize it, it can save you a lot of time, so it's important to memorize it. So why don't we change our expression now to reflect that? And we know we're on the right track here because the question gives you the value of a plus b. So why don't we just substitute that in here? We have six times a minus b is equal to 24, and we're being asked for the value of a minus b. So what times six is equal to 24? Four times six. So now we know the answer is answer choice B, because six times four is 24. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you learned something new about exponents and are now ready to kill it on the SAT. For more practice problems like the ones in this video and access to a 24 seven online practice tool, check out ACIT at the link below. ACIT is the ultimate study tool for the SATs and ACTs created by Juni Learning, an award-winning educational tech company that has helped thousands of students take their learning to the next level. Get a one week free trial when you use the link in the description. Until next time and happy studying.